listen, you've been asked countless times post career what you're going to do next, whether it's going to go into the coaching side, whether you go into the media. You've chosen management, my man. This is what we like. Come on, talk me yes, through that process. Uh, yes. talk, talk me why you've gone there. Yeah, so, um, you know, I was retired in 2009. I, I tried to do a bit of promoting and a few other things, but it's um, it wasn't with the right people, to be honest. And and uh, I think um, timing's everything. Uh, so I'm good friends with, with Darren Barker, who's also, um, you know, involved in the company. We both um, started this company, uh, International Sports Group Management. And the idea is, um, obviously, looking after boxers. Now, with myself, my, obviously, knowledge of the game, um, also managed myself for quite a bit of my career. So know that the inside of the ropes and also the outside of the ropes. So regarding, you know, you know, as you know, there's a lot of managers that don't know boxing. Don't go, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the thing is, um, is I think it's really important that boxers, especially young up and coming fighters are managed properly. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the time that's not the case. So it's something I've been thinking about the last few years with Darren. Um, and um, now we've got the company which is great, ISG, International Sports Group Management. And um, we also have um, Dave Rothwell, who's a uh, prop day tycoon in Australia, who's, who's on board. We've got the team around us. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited because, like I said, time is everything. Me and Darren are good friends. We've had this idea for a few years. And I, I think now's the time to uh, to get back in the boxing and um, hopefully start managing uh, some, some good fighters and uh, we'll get some world champions one day. Obviously, you've both got experience of the game, and I'm sure that you've come across plenty of fighters that have told you their own personal stories and you've been maybe scratching your head a little bit. Just explain to people that are listening to this the importance of having good management in order for a fighter to be able to maximise their potential. Yeah, so obviously, we, you know, I'll be honest, when I turned professional, I'll just give you my own little see. I was three-time ABA champion, I turned professional. Me and my father went up to speak to Mickey Duff and Terry Lawless. Um, I walked away with a £3,000 loan. I didn't know it was a loan. And also, I was on £300 a week for 20 fights. Um, 19 KOs, Young Box of the Year. And when I left Mickey Duff, Terry Lawless, I, um, I basically moved on. Obviously, the Frank Warren, but at that time, I couldn't afford my mortgage. Right? So I don't want... But luckily for me, I had the, the surroundings and the ability to still come through that. So that, what I just explained to you is what I don't want happening to other fighters in regards to you, you do great as an amateur, you turn pro, you don't really get the advice because we are boxers, we're not, mm-hmm. we're not businessmen. So then a lot of them get into a contract they don't really like and they're managed wrongly. And it's very important because obviously the promoter's over here and the manager should be over here to guide the boxer. So what I like to do is obviously myself, Darren and the company is, is from the start, from the get-go, making sure everything's in place for the boxer, you know, regarding the training, you know, sponsorship, who they're going to fight, you know, how are we going to guide their career going forward? And I, like I said, you know, connections with Darren, with obviously with Matchroom, myself, with my contacts and all our contacts. I think, you know, um, all we need is dedication and the talent and we'll guide them to the to the top. One thing, we've signed our first fighter. His name is Jesus Martinez. Um, mm-hmm. He's a youngster. He's only 17. He's a long-term project, but He's an excellent fighter. I think this guy could be a world champion. Um, speaking to him, he wants to be a multi-weight world champion, so he's confident, okay? So, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to go and see him in, in near Texas uh, next month. So I think I show his dedication. Considering I don't like to fly, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to go for a couple of days. That shows commitment there. So, yeah, it's all good. I'm really excited. And also, me and Dan, what we want to do is, um, from every person, we'd like to give a contribution to the British Boxing Board of Control Charity because... As we know in boxing, you know, a lot of fighters after they retire, you know, they struggle with with obviously mental illness, illness, obviously work, money. And I think it's it's only fair that we, we sort of hopefully start a trend where we, you know, we start looking after fighters when they retire too. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, I've lost count of how many fighters that I've had conversations with when they're walk into the ring and they've got so many external things that are on their mind, whether it be financial worries, whether it be something personal or whatever it may be. And they're actually walking to have a fight. Yeah. It's important. It's important that not just from a professional point of view, obviously managing their careers and getting them in the right places to win things and achieve all their dreams, but also to be able to give them that life advice because there's pitfalls in this game, isn't it? You know what I mean? When you're the king of the castle, there's a lot of Klingons. There's a lot of people that want to be your pal. And it's about being aware of those situations. Yes, of course it is. And like I said, I've been through it. Uh, Dan has been through it as well. So, you know, what it's like to not get the big fights and then all of a sudden you create a complete change. Like if I say myself, obviously the Lacey fight can change around 
wow, then you're fighting in these big holes. And yeah, you do get a lot of uh, blood suckers around. It's, it's, it's not cut corners. There are, you know, once, you know, you work hard to make your money, but really a lot of people work hard to take your money, you know, so-called financial advisors, so-called agents, so-called, and, you know, we are fighters predominantly and we want to be looked after and that's that's what we want to do is to make sure the fighter is is you know looked after the best that we can and like i said you know, my knowledge in the ring of 30 years of boxing if we can't do it then who can <laughs> exactly how much of a thrill is it to be doing it with your mate as well pal oh it's massive you know i mean they're good, really good friends and it's great to have the same hunger and that's good you know it's about because of being at the best in boxing you know you want to to be good or one of the best when you when you change over and do something else, whether it be training, managing, promoting, it's being a competitor and want to do a good job. So, like I said, I'm really excited for it, and so is uh, Darren and the company, and I'm, I'm I'm excited to get back in the boxing. Obviously, in your own personal career, you had your own hopes and dreams, and you achieved them all. Listen, you were the king, right? Thank you. Do do you do you think that helping somebody else achieve that dream will be a bigger thrill for you than you achieving your own? Okay, I wouldn't say it's going to be a bigger thrill than me because I don't like beating people up and getting paid for it. A lot of anger when I was younger. But um, it would be it would be the next best thing, you know, be, being a winner, being a champion. And, and for me personally, because I've been sort out of the sport in a way and with a lot of problems, you know, uh, with my father and my family and so on. So it's it's come to a point now I'm really looking forward to, to doing... I love boxing. Boxing's given me the, the, the life I have and my family and so on. So to give back and, and like you said, you know, to see one of my fighters have their, have their arm raised as a world champion would be a massive, massive thrill. And that's what excites me now. Have you been have you been keeping across everything in the game? I know that, like you've just said, you, you've, you've been in the shadows there, mate, but I, I doubt that you've not been watching everything that's been going on in the game. I've been watching, yeah, yeah. I've been watching some bits. Yeah, some bits and pieces. <laughs> Which bits what did you... Talk? What did you what did you make of uh, Canelo's year last year? Obviously, this is your old weight division, and every time we mentioned him being undisputed, we 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 did make a reference to you because, okay, officially technically, on the record come on, books, I am undisputed. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> officially on the record books, the name's not there, but we know technically that it is. All right. So, yeah, what yeah. did you make of his year last year? Well, I think you know you, what can you say? You know, to go and clean the, the super middleweight division, you know, it took me years to do that. But it just goes to say, show he's got a great management. You know, um, he's um, he's he's an excellent fight. But I'll be honest with you, it would be a fight I would love to have had. You know, when I watched him against Plant, you know, I think he was a quite a close fight. Mm. And I think what would I have done to Plant and a few other super middleweights back in the day? So I, it, you know, he's he's a great fighter. But I wish I was around fighting. Still, it would have been not only probably the biggest payday in my life, but it would have been my, my I think, my best fight. I love how, box Canelo. How, how hard is it to let it go? Because you, some of your old adversaries, mate, are still doing it. Like Roy Jones is still having a little bit of a tickle every yeah. now and again, isn't he? Yeah, you know what? When, when I retired, mate, it was, um, it was, it was decided before I actually retired. So I spoke with my dad and being a world champion for 10 years and fighting in front of your home stadium, the Millennium was now the principality, being Kessler for all the belts. You know, after all the struggles, all the injuries, what else was I going to do with 36? And two, yeah. two things, to, one thing, well, it was one thing and two. And I was go to America, which I never did, and win. Mm. And not, not just go to America, but win. And also fight when the legend. So that's when I fought Hopkins and I killed two birds with one stone, fulfilling a dream of fighting in Vegas and beating him and then going to Madison Square Garden and Mecca Boxing. So with my injuries and the longevity I did add in boxing, I decided I was going to retire before the Roy Jones fight. So it was a, an easy decision to make for me. And also I was suffering massive injuries at the time and I've been a world champion for 11 years and lost the hunger. But I do look back and I, I say, do you think I should have went to 50? No, he said, yeah, you should have. <laughs> he, he told me straight, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should have got there first. You know, I was still in good form at the time, but I suppose you can't really like yourself. It's not about money and greed, legacy matters. And it just felt like it was my time to say, Goodbye, you know. So I'm very, very fortunate, blessed to be able to, um, to to be in that position to do that. But don't get me wrong, you do miss boxing, and life is a lot different and tougher when you when you are out of the game. Yeah, you you just mentioned there some of those great nights uh, in in Wales in particular, and that night against Kesler was just unreal. Um, next week we're in Wales because Cardiff is kicking off um, the British Boxing Board of Control's run of uh, sensational fights that are coming up. We've got Eubank. This this sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Eubank versus uh, versus a Welshman. Anyway, we've got yeah, Liam, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got Liam Williams yeah. doing his thing in Cardiff, mate. The atmosphere should be absolutely unbelievable, shouldn't it? 
Yeah, the atmosphere will be fantastic and it'll be great for getting a big night of boxing back in Cardiff, you know, um, reigniting the nights I used to have there. So I think it's fantastic. I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, I think they're quite evenly matched. There's a grudge match, which we all like to see. But I like to think that Williams can, uh, can, can, can do it. I hope he can. Fingers crossed, mate. Listen, I appreciate your time this morning, Joe. Really uh, wish you and Darren well with this because advice from world champions of your ilk to young guys coming through, not and girls, obviously, not necessarily just from a professional point of view, but from a lifestyle point of view, I think is invaluable. And as well, as you mentioned throughout the course of this conversation, to give back as well yeah. to the guys that are retiring, I think is a really important thing. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Appreciate it.